Welcome to CSET Biology, the cover page. I am Mr. Wilson, and today we're going to be looking at the pedigree chart. The pedigree chart is sometimes called the family tree, and it helps us pretty much to do a whole lot of stuff in genetics. These include showing genetic links between parents, offspring, and sibling. It also helps with tracking genetic traits within a family. The chart is used in genetic counseling to show dominance, recessive, autosomal, and sex-linked traits. The chart helps to determine genotype and phenotype of offspring. It is always helpful in predicting genetic defect in offspring. Symbols used on the pedigree chart would include the circle, which is not shaded, which represents a female, pretty much smooth on the outside. The square, not shaded, represents the male. A vertical line, which represents the descendant. I am a descendant of my father. My father is a descendant of my grandfather. Then a shaded circle is used to represent a female with a trait that is being studied. A shaded square, like the circle, is used to represent a male that has a trait that is being studied. A horizontal line represents marriage or sibling line, and we're gonna be seeing later, it shows pretty much that connection between the male and the female. Shaded portion of the circle represents heterozygous or a carrier. Shaded portion of the square represents the heterozygous form in male. There are other symbols to include the triangle, which represents miscarriage on the family tree. This might be very important as we do further studies in genetics. There's also a symbol for twins square, and this is represented by the circle of the square connected by an inverted V. Then there is also room for adaptation, and the adopted child is represented by a circle between square brackets. Disease is also represented on your pedigree chart, and disease is represented using a circle with a line drawn straight through midway that circle. Now, parts of a pedigree chart, the symbols we've just looked at, now we have them all together, and we're going to be looking at the parts, the name parts of the pedigree chart, as this is going to be very important in solving questions that are related to the pedigree chart. So first we have the marriage line which shows the union between a male and a female. We have the sibling line that shows pretty much the connection between the children from the parent above. It's very important that we note that there are two numbers to the side written in white. We want to pay attention to those. And here we have the parents on screen, the square representing the father and the circle representing the mother. It's important to note here that the representation of a square for male could be likened to the fact that males are sometimes considered to be a little rougher than women are. While the circle, nice curved, smooth shape, pretty much represents a woman who is usually a little more detailed in how she takes care of self. So I want you to tell me in the comments below if you think the representation of a man using a square is ideal, the square having four sharp edges or four sharp corners, and the circle with smooth surface all around, if that nicely represents a female. Then we have the descendant line, and that pretty much shows the connection between parents and the offspring. The offspring is, of course, the children, and the descendant line speaks to those children that comes from parent. The descendant line will also go into grandchildren and great-grandchildren, that sort of a thing. Then we look at the generation here in blue. Now, the numbers to the side of your pedigree chart will represent your generation. So the parents is going to be the first generation, children, second generation, grandchildren, third generation, and a pedigree chart could go on and on and on and on. Now, we're looking at an example of a pedigree chart, 
And this pedigree chart is showing uh, trait, persons affected by the trait, persons who are carrier, male, female. And if we observe, it is also numbered. It is numbered in black so that we can easily identify individuals with particular trait and we can easily solve and name individuals on the pedigree chart. To read the chart, you should have knowledge of genetic diagram and rules used to solve genetic problems such as the Punnett square. You should have some knowledge of genotype, phenotype, and related racial. Now to the right here, we are looking at the Punnett square. This is pretty much blood type that we're looking at. You could just follow us in the description below to see the video for this particular Punnett square. But you must have some knowledge of Punnett square to be able to solve the genetic diagram. Now to read the chart, you should determine if the trait is dominant or recessive. If it is dominant, one of a parent must have the trait and the trait will not skip a generation. Hence, all generations are affected by the trait. This pedigree chart shows dominance. You should determine if the trait is dominant or recessive. This is another important thing. If the trait is recessive, it can skip a generation. So we're looking here, the second generation, it's all skipped. The trait is not shown up in the second generation, however, it's in the third generation. So we know that this is a recessive trait. Check to see if a problem is autosomal or sex link. Autosomal meaning that it's affecting the regular body cells. Sex link meaning that it is associated with the XY chromosomes, as it were, for genetics. Now, if it is sex link, males are more likely to be affected by the trait. Queer, those are shaded. And of course, they are affected by the trait. The square in the second generation, that person is introduced to the family. So of course, that square is not shaded. That person is not affected by the trait, being that they have been introduced to the family. However, the square there in or the individual at the third generation, they're represented by the square. That person is indeed affected by the trait. Autosomal trait will see male and female having equal chance to be exposed. So if you observe here, we are having both male and female being exposed to the trait. When we're working the pedigree chart, dominance does not mean the most popular. You are supposed to fill in what you know first. Some offspring may have potentially two genotypes. In such case, both possibilities must be written. The member of a pedigree chart does not necessarily reflect the first filial generation. Members, in most cases, reflect individual birth and may adopt any possibility of its first filial generation. Let's solve a problem. Earlobe is an autosomal recessive trait. A person who is dominant for the trait has unattached earlobe. While a recessive individual has attached earlobe, we are solving for the recessive allele. Defining the allele, let capital A be the dominant allele for earlobe. Let common A be the recessive allele for earlobe. Observe, I'm moving the cursor just to highlight the point. So I want you to write the genotype and phenotype for the following family tree. Let's solve. First thing you need to do is to write in what you know. If it is a recessive allele, the trait must be acquired in its homozygous recessive form, which is two common A's as it were for this case. Hence, all the solid black would have a genotype of AA. Let's write. They are all common A's. Good. So we know that these three individuals, they would have attached earlobe. But we still need to solve for two. Now we know two doesn't have attached earlobe. It is detached and there are two possibilities. It could be homozygous or it could be heterozygous. We're trying to homozygous here. But what we've realized is that 
we are going to be getting heterozygous offspring, which means that all these offsprings will have detached earlobe. So right away, we are sure that the father is not homozygous for the trait. We know male number two has unattached earlobe as a square is not solid black or it's not shaded. But what is his genotype? All right, so we know that he's not homozygous dominant, so he must be heterozygous dominant. And if you observe here, we're getting two common A from this cross and two heterozygous. And based on what we're seeing here, we have two common A. So it seems as if we would have solved here Everyone with the common A has attached earlobe, while the heterozygous form of capital A common A represents unattached earlobe. Hence, the fact that we can pick up persons who are homozygous recessive, as is highlighted in red, we are sure that the father is heterozygous for the trait. Thanks for watching. CSEC Biology, the cover page with Mr. Wilson. Please be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. And leave us a comment below if you liked the video. We want to also assist you with finding the videos online. So we're going to be showing you a short clip now as to how to find videos, how to determine what's the next suggested video, and of course, how to subscribe. So to find the videos for the creator, you are going to click on this icon. You've been looking for my video, uh, CSET Biology cover page, a blue icon, and that will take you to the back end of the channel. And there you can find all our videos. Now, this white icon on screen with the exclamation mark, while you're watching the video, it will be on the screen in this same position. And of course, you're going to click it and it will tell you what's a suggested video or the video that you should click on next then to the bottom you'll see a yellow with CSET biology tcp you're going to be clicking on that to subscribe however there are other methods to subscribe you could click on that red button that says subscribe that is below the video and that will also allow you to subscribe to the channel until next time take care